EPTM roofing is a synthetic rubber compound which can be used to cover a variety of buildings and roof styles. It's highly flexible, suitable for apex, pent and flat roofs and is a fully adhered system, meaning that it does not require flame to fit. It creates a waterproof barrier and is extremely durable, protecting your roof with a life expectancy of up to 50 years. To install this rubber roofing system you will need an electric screwdriver, a long handled roller, a long handled brush, a handsaw, a hammer, a Stanley knife or cutting tool, a tape measure, a step ladder and a seam roller. We would recommend that you use gloves when dealing with any kind of adhesive. There are several different methods you can use to secure the EPDM roofing to the edge of your building. In this video we are going to show you how to install both the plastic capping and edging as well as how to secure the roofing with timber battens and fascias for a more natural look. Begin by placing 2x2 two two battens underneath the front and back edge of the roof and securing in place with screws down through the roof boards. Always make sure that the screws are countersunk to prevent the rubber snagging on the heads. Place the first length of drip trim against the battens, placing it 5mm below the edge of the roof, again making sure that your screws are countersunk. When aligning the second strip up against the first, allow a 5mm gap between the two. This gives the plastic room to expand and contract with the change in temperature throughout the year. This gap will be covered by the rubber and extra capping. If you are doing this method for the entire cabin, you will need to do the exact same thing on the rear of the cabin too. You can now start to lay out the rubber roofing. Lay one edge out so that it overhangs the building by a good 12 inches. Then you can just pull the rest of it out to cover the roof. Trim off any large excess so that you are left with a sheet that is easier to deal with. As this cabin has an apex roof, Hold back the apex edges so that you can easily pull it back from the roof, allowing you to glue underneath. Pull the rubber back halfway along the apex of the roof, smoothing out any folds or wrinkles. Then fold back roughly one foot more so you can ensure that you are not going to be left with any dry spots. Open up the glue and begin to tip it out in even spots along the roof, taking care not to put it too close to the edge of the roof. The glue is not a contact adhesive, you just have to make sure that there is a decent amount on the wood side. If it's too close to the edge when you roll it, you're going to push glue off the roof. For large areas, roll through the glue with a long handled roller, spreading a thin layer across the length of the roof. You want to put enough glue on so that it divides evenly between the wood and the rubber. Too little and it's not going to stick properly, and too much the rubber will start to slide and slip around. Once you have spread the glue, pull the rubber over evenly to cover the area, and then repeat this until you have reached the end of the roof. With an apex roof, it's easy if you pull the glue up the roof with the roller to prevent it being pushed towards the edge. Make sure to roll over the top edge of the apex just in case there is a gap between the panels to ensure that the roofing is well sealed. With one half of the roof finished, you then need to use a brush or broom to sweep the rubber down towards the edges, removing bubbles and wrinkles. You can then pull the rubber back to expose the other half of the roof and repeat the process. The glue dries tacky and stays pliable. As the glue dries into the wood, the rubber will be drawn down forming a seal. Measure the width of your roof with a tape measure. This will allow you to cut down the plastic capping or timber to your required length. First, we are going to look at the plastic trims and capping for a sleek modern look. Measure out the trim to half the width of your building reducing the size by roughly 3 to 4 mm. This allows an expansion gap for changes in temperature. Cut it down with a handsaw and repeat on a second piece of trim. Use the machined edge for the centre join as the rough sawn edge will be covered by the corner pieces. Align your first trim against the front edge of your building, flush to one side. It should fit neatly against the existing drip trim underneath. Make sure to lower the trim slightly from the top lip of the roof to create an effective water runoff. Pin it through the pre-drilled holes and into the battens behind. When tacking the end of the trim, move a pin's length in from the end, lining up with the others and hammer firmly through the plastic. When you attach the other side, make sure that it is flush with the edge. This will leave a slight gap in the middle of the two pieces. This is your expansion gap. In order to fit the corner gaps, fold the rubber as shown and pin into place for a neat edge. Do this for all four corners. 
You can now start to trim away the excess rubber from underneath the front and back of the building. Using a sharp blade, pull the rubber back on itself, not down, to smoothly trim along the edge. This movement prevents a ragged edge and allows the rubber to shrink back underneath the drip trims. When you get to the central join, be careful not to snag the sheeting, making sure to pull away from the edge before continuing with the rest of the roof. For the corner pieces, align the edge of the side fascia with the end of the roof. Not quite flush, but certainly not protruding. Pin in place through the plastic into the wooden batten underneath and repeat up the roof. The corner gaps have small seals which are designed to be snapped out depending on the corner you're working on in order to fit over the fascia. These do not feature pre-drilled holes, simply pin through the plastic with a hammer on both sides. Repeat this around all edges of your building to complete the installation, making sure to trim the rubber after you have applied the drip trims and fascias. An alternative method of installing the rubber cover roofing is by using timber battens and fascias, using the rubber itself as its own drip trim. Begin by folding the rubber under the edge of the roof and placing wooden battens roughly one inch in from the edge. This will allow any rainwater to drip from the rubber instead of damaging the wood. Screw up through the battens into the roof boards to secure the battens across the entire length of the building. As with the plastic stripping, you will want to leave a small expansion gap for the timbers to move throughout the year. You should secure the battens at roughly 12 inch intervals. Once fitted, you can now go along the back edge of the timbers with a sharp knife to trim away the excess rubber. Again, remembering to pull away from the blade and not directly down, to prevent any snagging. The side fascias work in a similar manner to the plastic drip trim in that they sandwich the rubber between two sets of fascias to protect the roof timbers and create a flat working edge. This does mean that you will require extra boards from those supplied in a standard log cabin kit. Fold back the rubber from the edge of the roof so that you can affix your first set of fascias in place. Screw into the roof logs ensuring that they are countersunk for a flat finish. You can then fold the rubber down over the boards, trimming the ends so that the rubber fits neatly under the second fascia. You will also need to create a small fold at the apex to prevent the rubber from wrinkling. Attach your second fascia boards as before, sandwiching the rubber in between. The excess rubber can then be trimmed off using a sharp knife as before, making sure to firmly pull away from the blade to prevent any snagging. Repeat this on the other side of the building to complete the install. If you have a building with roof corners, you will need to cut and join two pieces of the EPDM roofing. This next section illustrates how to do this and keep your roof waterproof. Begin by gluing down your rubber pieces, ensuring that they only go up to the corner joint and do not overlap. When you press the rubber down, sweep across it to remove any trapped air. The glue stays pliable, allowing you to reposition the rubber slightly if needed. If the glue dries too quickly, it can cause the air to become trapped, resulting in bubbles. The rubber itself will expand and contract seasonally, and can result in some wrinkling during periods of hot weather. However, this is natural and a result of the rubber finding its own expansion point. This will not affect all roofs, however. When joining two pieces of rubber together, you want to prevent puckering and keep all of the lines clean. Trim down the edge of the rubber with a Stanley knife or similar blade to remove any excess. Lay your cover tape over the join without removing either of the backing tapes. Ensure that it is central and mark down edges onto the rubber. This will give you a border for spreading the adhesive primer. It is important to be accurate with your lines as this will act as the seal to prevent water ingress. As it is a primer and not a glue, you do not need to rush to get the tape down, so take your time, particularly if you are doing multiple corners at once. Begin to remove the backing paper from the tape, a small section at a time, making sure to line it up straight with the lines. Use a seam roller to firmly press the tape down across the length of the join. If any air has become trapped under the tape, you can use the roller to work any bubbles to the edge. The joint is now watertight, however could be removed if needed. Given curing time of a couple of weeks, this will not be possible. Thank you for taking the time to watch our guide on installing EPDM rubber cover roofing kits. For more information on this long-lasting roofing alternative, simply visit waltons.co.uk.